All right, this is grade three, module four, lesson 13. And we're going to be finding the areas right here of some funky figures uh, by decomposing them into rectangles because that's what we understand. And then sometimes we're going to add, sometimes we're going to subtract. But basically, we're going to be taking what we've been learning about rectangles and then finding the area of some funky shapes. For example, Let's say we've got this funky shape right here. It's not quite a rectangle. Um, we can see that it's going up by 6. And this width over here is 6. Um, <clears throat> but it's certainly not a 6 by 6 rectangle. Now what we can do, if we want to find the area of this figure, is, well, heck, we could begin by just counting all the individual, individual squares inside this figure. And, of course, that would give us the right answer. Or we can chop it up into two rectangles. And if I wanted to, I could chop this up right here. And all of a sudden, that makes two rectangles. It makes this rectangle right here, and it makes this rectangle right here. And now we could find the areas of these two rectangles and then add them up. Uh, for example, the red rectangle is uh, 6 by 2, all right? which means this rectangle has an area of 12, because it's 6 by 2. 6 times 2. And then I can add in the blue rectangle. Now the blue rectangle, we can see, is a 4 by 4 rectangle, which means it has an area of 16 square units. So I can add in 4 times 4, and then I can, you know, add all that together, and we would get, uh, let's see, 12 plus 16, which is 28. All right, so there's one way to do it. Now, another way to do it, which is really kind of cool, we could take another rectangle here, I mean another figure, it's not quite a rectangle. Uh, but what we could do is we can imagine it to be a complete rectangle. So we can imagine this piece being here. So now we have a complete rectangle. And actually, this complete rectangle is actually a square. It's actually um, a 6 by 6 square. And if we were to do 6 times 6... That would give us 36, but that would give us the entire rectangle, and that would be including this little thing that we don't want to include. So we need to subtract out 2 times 4, because that is the area of this little rectangle. And I'm going to make that a little bit more obvious this little rectangle is 2 by 4, which means it has an area of 8. So, if we were going to do our math here, I'm going to move this up a little bit, we're going to get 36, because that's the complete square, but we're going to take away 8, because that's the little rectangle that wasn't really supposed to be there, and we end up with 28, which is the exact same answer as what we got over here. So we could do it two ways. We could cut it up into two rectangles and add, or we can pretend it's a completed rectangle and then subtract. So we could get the answer with addition, or we can get the answer with subtraction. And that's really kind of a cool thing about math. It's so creative. So let's practice now, this one, they're kind of specifically telling us that we're supposed to subtract. So we could use the addition method on this problem, um, but they want us to use the subtraction method. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of the big, huge rectangle. So the big, huge rectangle is 8 times 7. But then, 
this little rectangle is not really here. It's not shaded in because we're supposed to find the shaded region. So this little piece, it's actually a square, is 3 times 3. So we need to subtract out 3 times 3. So what does that mean? So this is the big, huge rectangle that's shaded. And then this is the little rectangle that isn't shaded that we need to subtract out. Okay? And actually, I'm, I called this the big rectangle that's shaded. Well, this is the big rectangle, and if the whole thing was shaded, it would be one big, huge, complete rectangle. And that's what 8 times 7 is. So, 8 times 7 would go right here. 3 times 3 would go right here. And really, they wanted us to put 56 minus 9, which is equal to, oh my goodness, 47 square centimeters. So the area of the shaded region is 47 square centimeters. On this problem, again, they're kind of telling us that they want us to use the subtraction method because over here they're telling us find the area of the big huge rectangle and then find the area of the small rectangle and then subtract. So let's go ahead and do that. We will indeed play their game. So this big huge rectangle what is the area of that big, huge rectangle? Well, we can see that the one side of that rectangle is a 9. The other side length of that rectangle is an 8. So we're going to fill in 9 times 8, which is 72 square centimeters. Now, that's the big rectangle. Now we need to find the area of the small rectangle. So what? Now we know we need to get the side lengths, don't we, in order to find this the area of this rectangle, but we don't know these two side lengths. Well, how are we going to find these two side lengths? Let's start with this one. We know that this bottom is 9. That means the top has to be 9. This whole thing from here to here has to be 9. And since this piece is 6, that means this missing piece must be a 3. In the same way, if this side over here is 8, and over here we have 4 plus something, so that means this whole thing has to be 8, which means the missing piece is a 4 because we know this piece down here was a 4, so 4 plus 4. So now we know that the small little rectangle is going to be found by doing 4 times 3, which is 12. So now how are we going to find the shaded region, the area of the shaded region? Well, 72 would be the entire thing and then we're going to subtract 12 because the entire thing isn't shaded in. It's missing this piece right here. So 72 minus 12. Well, 72 minus 10 is 62. Minus 2 more is 60. So the area of the shaded region is 60 square centimeters. Now, I was kind of bummed by this problem because, honestly, teachers, uh, the Engage New Yorker is telling kids how to solve this problem. They said you have to solve it using subtraction. And, of course, that's not true. So I want to just take a second to show you another way that students could have solved this problem. So if they bring this up, please don't tell them they're wrong. Uh, congratulate them for being out-of-the-box thinkers and coming up with a better way or a different way to solve the problem. So we're not going to use all this stuff over here. Let's just solve it. So um, what we, we're going to do is we've got this big old huge rectangle, 
But I can see that if I just cut straight down right here, and ignoring this, because that's not really there, I now get two rectangles. I get a big rectangle here, and I get a little small rectangle down here. So let's find the area of these two rectangles. Let's start with a big old huge rectangle. Well, what are the two side lengths of this big old huge rectangle? It's not nine. It's just this piece right here. So what is the length of that little piece right there? Well, the clue is up here. If this piece right here is six, that means this piece down here is six. So I'm going to write that down, six. And the other side length is right here, eight. So this big rectangle has the two side lengths, and I'll do it in blue. And let's make it here. has the two side lengths of six and eight. So six times eight, and that's 48. So this big rectangle has an area of 48 square centimeters. Now let's do this small little rectangle. Well, we can see that one side of that small little rectangle is a 4. So the question is, what is the other side length? Well, our clue is up here in this missing section. We know that the whole thing is 9, and we know that this little piece is 6 and this little piece is 6, so really we can just look down here. So if the whole thing is 9 and the blue piece is 6, that means the missing red piece is a 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. So that means this piece right here is 12. And so the area of the shaded rectangle, so that's the whole thing, right? So that's all of this is found by doing 48 plus 12. And 48 plus 10 is 58, plus two more is 60 square centimeters. And that's exactly the answer we got in the previous slide. Only this time, we got it through addition, whereas in the previous problem, previous slide, we got the answer through subtraction. And really, we want to value uh, diversity and multiple solution methods. So that's why I thought I would go against the directions and share with you a different way to get that answer. And so that is Grade 3, Module 4, Lesson 13, taking funky figures and either decomposing them into two small rectangles or by completing the shape and then using subtraction.